This is a film of the two-way installation process, filmed at Wild Blue headquarters in the United States. There are three elements of the two-way antenna, the reflector, the elevation and azimuth mount, and the transceiver called the TRIA, mounted on two arms. Please note that the reflector is a precision part that must not be damaged or deformed in any way. The reflector first needs to be bolted onto the azimuth and elevation mount. There are in total five coach bolts with five flanged nuts. And do not forget to tighten the bolts carefully. The next step is to mount the mast clamps of the antenna onto the azimuth and elevation mount. The clamps are identical. Because of the weight of the antenna, we recommend you first mount the azimuth and elevation mount onto the mast with its clamps. Tighten the nuts only with your hands. Make sure that the antenna does not slide down the mast. The antenna should be able to be swung from left to right in the azimuth plane. The next step is to fix the feed arms. Push carefully the two rectangular tubes of the feed arms into the azimuth mount. The feed arms with the trio will be held in position so you can use both hands to fix the arms with the four bolts, spring washers and washers. Tighten the bolts carefully. The antenna unit is now complete and we can now move on to the pointing process. This process has four phases. The preset of elevation, the coarse pointing, the fine pointing and finally the four point test. For the elevation adjustment, loosen the two locking nuts on the left and the right hand side of the azimuth elevation mount. Now, tighten the antenna fixation to the mast in a way that there is not a visible gap between the top end of the elevation and azimuth mount and the mast. Make sure that the antenna can be swung from left to right in the azimuth plane. Now we move to preset. Take the inclinometer and adjust your elevation angle according to your line of sight angle. For information about the elevation angle, line of sight, etc., you may contact the website www.satsig.net or, in the future, the KASAT pointing tool developed by System Integration Team. In this example, the elevation angle is 42 degrees. Now, adjust the elevation until you have reached the desired angle, which again in this case is 42 degrees. Verify the elevation angle with the inclinometer. The accuracy should be within plus or minus one degree. Connect the TXF connector on the TRIA with the modem TX connector. The modem is an installation mode. Now we will show you how to set the modem to installation mode which enables the beeper on the TRIA. In a first step, set up the network connection on your computer to a fixed IP address. The IP address is 192 dot one six eight dot one hundred dot ten with a subnet mask of two five five two five five two five five zero the example shown in the video is for the operating system windows xp for other operating systems please consult the computer manual
Now, connect the modem via the coaxial cable to the TRIA. Connect your PC to the modem via the network cable. By plugging in the power cable, you switch on the modem. You should wait for the modem to stop booting up. Once the second LED starts flashing, it is finished booting. Open the browser on your computer and type in the modem's IP address, 192.168.100.1. At first you will see the terminal home status page. The modem is normally yellow and the other two green. Click on the modem status page, which will give you further information about the modem. Click on the TRIA status page, which will give you further information about the TRIA status. You will now go to the installation page that is required for the modem configuration and activation of the beeper in the TRIA. Type in your browser 192.168.100.1 forward slash install. The installation home page will show you the four predefined configurations of the different spots of KASAT and an additional bu button to enter a customized configuration. The KASAT pointing tool indicates which beam color you require when you have entered in the location of the installation. If you go to custom carrier, it will bring you to another screen that allows you to enter the forward carrier symbol rate, the frequency, and to select the polarization. Please note that this page is for professionals only. SAT ID is 21. Once you have finished the configuration of the modem and see this screen, you may go out to perform the pointing process of the terminal. You will now hear a tone from the TRIA called a heartbeat. The heartbeat tone indicates that the terminal is looking for a receive signal. Once the terminal has detected a forward carrier, you will immediately hear the acquisition tone, like an American police car. That is the lock tone. Now you have found the satellite and can fix the antenna to the mast. Make sure not to lose the lock tone while you are fixing the antenna to the mast. The next stage is fine pointing. Start by loosening the azimuth locking nuts on the top and the bottom of the azimuth elevation mount. The modem now tries to detect the maximum signal level and stores the last value. For this, the antenna needs to go several times past the maximum in azimuth and in elevation. Now turn the azimuth fine pointing screw. Keep turning in the same direction. until you hear the beeper level drop. Now you have passed the maximum level. As soon as the beeper tone gets lower, turn the bolt in the opposite direction. beeper tone will now get higher and reach finally a continuous high tone. Continue in the same direction until you hear again the tone getting lower and lower. You have passed the maximum signal level in the other direction. Now turn the azimuth fine adjust screw again in the opposite direction until you hear the continuous tone. You have now reached the maximum in azimuth. This scene shows the same process from a view of the top of the antenna, so you can see the antenna movement as well as the beeper signals.
Now perform the same process for elevation. Move the elevation adjustment bolt until you hear the beeper tone drop. Change direction until you hear the continuous tone and keep going until the beeper tone drops again. Change again the direction until the antenna is back to the continuous tone. The antenna is now correctly pointed. You must now fix the two azimuth and two elevation locking nuts. Be careful that you always hear the continuous tone. If not, you need to repeat the fine pointing process. Please remember that the antenna cannot move, so needs to be locked off correctly. The last phase is the pointing test. Push and pull the antenna as shown in the four points. Be careful not to deform the, an the antenna. If the antenna comes back to the continuous tone, the antenna is well pointed. There are three windows showing the pointing status. The left screen is highlighted at course, course pointing, where you will hear only the heartbeat tone of the beeper. The middle window is highlighted during the fine pointing process. The bar underneath shows the forward carrier signal to noise ratio. The right window appears when you would hear the continuous beeper tone. This does not automatically mean that the pointing is finished as you need to go several times over the maximum to find the optimum peak value. Once this process is finished and the antenna is fixed, go back to the modem status page to see the logon process of the modem to the network. The process is automatic and starts with syncing of the modem to the forward carrier. Afterwards the ranging process and the adjustment of the return carrier. Finally, the log on to the network and the obtaining of the DHCP address. After this point, the modem is fully connected to the network and all data presented in the status page of the modem and TRIA are now valid.